Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very very radical equation. I don't think I made a video on this problem before but that looks kind of familiar maybe I thought about it and I haven't and if I did I apologize. So we have the square root of z plus the square root of z equals i and we're going to be solving for z. First of all you have to think about this are there any solutions Let's go ahead and find out. Because this is kind of like a very radical equation. It's kind of like a nested radical. We don't just have square root of z, but we have the square root of that as well. So how do you solve these kinds of equations? Let's think simple, like real numbers. You have to get rid of the radicals, right? I mean, one method would probably involve replacing z with a plus b i, because it's the name of this channel, right? That would solve a lot of problems. Well, let's go ahead and proceed in a different way first. Let's square both sides. When we square the outer square root, the sh outer shell is going to disappear. And we're going to end up with i squared, which is negative 1, right? Now, there are two square roots of i, but there's only one square of i. So, i squared is unique, you see? Anyways, that's a different story. Now, how do you solve for z from here? Well, you can kind of turn it into a quadratic equation. So one way to approach it would be the following. Set square root of z equal to w. And then z would be w squared. And then plug it in. w squared plus w equals negative 1 plus 1 equals 0. And then from here, you're going to find w equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is going to give you the square root of 3i because that's negative uh, 3, the square root of that. And all of that is divided by 2. What does this look like to you? Well, if you kind of focused on this equation and multiply both sides by w minus 1, actually, you would still get 0. But one stipulation you have to keep in mind is w should not equal 1. Because that doesn't satisfy this equation, but we introduce it as an extraneous solution. Guess what? w cubed minus 1 equals 0 gives you the cube roots of 1, except for 1. Make sense? Well, so w is supposed to be cube root of 1, and it is, because if you think about it, this is e to the power 2 pi i, and if you write it as 2 pi n i, right, like this, and divide the exponent by 3, you're going to get the cube roots, and then for n equals 0 and n equals 1, you have two values, n equals 0, obviously, going to give you 1, so you have to... Ex um, Forget about it and use n equals 1 and n equals 2. And those are going to give you 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3, which kind of explains the scenario here. Negative 1 half plus root 3 over 2i and negative 1 half minus root 3 over 2i. The fourth and the third quadrants, right? That's what it is. But if you didn't want to proceed like that, you could go ahead and isolate the radical and square both sides. You should be getting the same thing, right? Let's see. This gives us z equals 1 plus z squared plus 2z. By the way, I thought about this as z plus 1 because negation squared, negative 1 squared is going to be 1. And this becomes z squared plus z plus 1 equals 0. Wait a minute. We just solved the same equation for w. So are you talking about the same roots even though one of them is the square? Yes. If you take the cube root of 1, square it, you get another cube root of 1, which is kind of interesting because it's a cycle. It's a cyclic group, right? Is it? Maybe it's a group, maybe it's not. Anyways, you get the idea. Those are going to be the solutions. But are they actually solutions? We have to think about it, right? So this one is e to the power 2 pi i over 3, I think. Am I right? And this one is 4 pi i over 3. Yeah, I think this one is bigger, so it should be in the fourth quadrant. Good. So let's go ahead and see if we can plug it in and find the answer that way. Square root of z plus the square root of z. Because in a little bit, we're going to take a look at the answer from Wolfram Alpha. And we kind of have to match what we find with that, right? I mean, do you trust Wolfram Alpha? Yeah, most of the time, it'll find a solution. Sometimes you can't. It just says Wolfram Alpha doesn't understand a query, which means I'm not capable of solving this problem. Too bad. Artificial intelligence is not at that level yet. We human beings are still smarter in that sense. But who knows what's going to happen in 10 years, right? Anyways, I digress. Let's get back to this. So we have e to the power of 2 pi i over 3. So if I plug it in, 
I kind of get something like this. And here's one thing to be careful about. This is kind of a little ambiguous because a complex number has two square roots. So which one am I going to go with? Well, test both. Why not? For example, one of them is going to give you uh, one of them is going to be e to the power pi i over 3, right? And obviously the other one you can find just by adding pi to this and pi over 3 plus pi is going to be 4 pi over 3. So, you know, get the idea, hopefully. Now, let's go ahead and find the square root of this sum, right? Well, I'm kind of thinking about this. Uh, obviously, we can kind of add these or even maybe take out the e to the power 2 pi. Can we factor this out? Probably, because it kind of looks like, to me, it looks like z squared plus z. And I'm thinking about z times z plus 1, but I'm not sure if that's going to help us. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of work. Anyways, I just want to do this. Keep it simple. Cosine of 2 pi over 3 plus i sine 2 pi over 3. Let's just do it brute force because it's easy. And this one. Now think about the values and just add them up. Well, this one, 2 pi over 3, if you think about it, that's going to be... 120 degrees, right? So it's kind of like this. And its cosine is going to be negative 1 half. So this is negative 1 half plus, and this will be uh, the root 3 over 2i. And then I will have this cosine of 60, which is 1 half. And sine of 60 is going to be root 3 over 2i. And when I add these up, negative 1 half, positive 1 half cancel out, leaving us with root 3i. Uh-oh, I did not get, I did not get I, so this didn't work. Okay, what happens if I tried e to the power 4 pi i over 3? So like cosine 2 pi over 3, dot, 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 cosine 4 pi over 3, dot, dot, dot. Now you got to think about this. Cosine 2 pi over 3, we already know this. This is negative 1 half plus root 3 over 2 i. And then this one is going to be in the fourth quadrant. Remember, both values are negative when i add these great i'm going to be getting negative one wasn't i supposed to get negative one yes from this i got this which is negative one so yes one of the roots satisfy it but you also have to think about negative one has two square roots one of them is i the other one is negative i okay let's go ahead and take a look at the results from wolfram alpha or should I say the result? And then we'll finish up with that, right? You can test out the other values. Hopefully this gave you some ideas. And Wolfram Alpha, ta-da, says no solutions exist. Too bad, Wolfram Alpha. I don't know why you say that, but looks like I found a solution. But again, this could be problematic. You're going to decide. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.